So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, you are welcome to this lecture. And I see this course as an advanced, a bit of an advanced level than the usual, you know, MBA one. So, um, the initial part, what I would do is I would suggest that you watch the previous videos, especially on the formulation. There are three special kinds of linear programming called transportation, transshipment, and assignment which are in the world of the network flow diagrams. And that's what we are gonna be doing today. And the approach to arriving at the solution is different from the natural way that the MBAs or the other groups of master students will be doing, which is something that you'd want to learn. We are gonna use special algorithms to do that. So we'll be starting with the transportation model. The main feature of the transportation model is that you have some items to transport them from a supply source to a demand destination. That's what you have at a cost. And the cost is usually written as CIJ. Now, the stations that will be using here, and they are simply easy. You remember the objective coefficient is represented by the cost. The idea here is that you want to minimize a distance. You want to minimize a cost or you want to maximize something, okay? Now, if it is a minimization, then the general transportation minimization problem is what you see on your screen. Where you are minimizing a particular objective function, which in this case, it is, um, you have the C representing the costs or the distance that you have to travel. And then the XI is representing the decision variables, okay? But you can see that now we are doing it XIJ and CIJ instead of XI and CI. Now, the reason is because it is from a certain section to a certain section. And you'll be understanding that pretty soon. Of course, this is always subject to the constraint that you see here. This is a supply constraint. So the total number of items transported should be up to the total supply, up to the total supply. The total number of items demanded, you know, should be at least the total demand. So you have these things there. All right. There are two methods for solving this transportation problem. We're going to look at all of them. The first one, or let me put this, we're going to look at some of them. The first one is a stepping stone method, and then the modified distribution method. These are the optimal solution steps for arriving at a solution. And I, quite, I hope you do remember the simplex method. You remember the idea of the simplex method, the feasible, the, the initial feasible solution and all of that. That's the same principle we are going to use to work out these things. But before you can solve any transportation model, you need to find an initial feasible solution. The initial feasible solution is a solution, but it's not optimal. And there are three ways of arriving at that. The Northwest corner method, we shall end that the minimum sales cost method and the Voges approximation model. We're gonna look at these approaches, okay? So the transportation model, you are transporting items from a source to a destination, okay? The transporting items from a source to... So what we are gonna do is we are going to start the transportation model looking at an example, using a practical example. And like I said, this is already in the previous video, so I'll go quickly through it. Wheat is harvested in the Midwest. Wheat is stored in grain elevators in three cities, Kansas, Omaha, and Del Mio, okay, depending on where you are. Uh, DM, I'll make it simple as DM. The elevators supply three flour mills located in Chicago, Cincinnati, St. Louis, and the grain is shipped to the mill. So you are shipping them from the elevators 
Okay. From the elevators here, okay, all the way to the mills. From the elevators to the mills. And so that is the way it goes. Now, you have the mill there where you send the items to. And that's what you have there. So you have an elevator in Kansas City. It is supplying 150 items to all of these three mills. Omaha is supplying 175 tons of wheat to all these mills. And the mill is supplying 275 tons of wheat to all these mills. And these mills also have their specific number of items, which are all fixed. Okay, all of these are assumed fixed. 200 from Chicago. St. Louis is only expecting 100 tons of wheat. Cincinnati is expecting 300 tons. Okay. And the cost associated with sending to each of these pathways is what you have there. Kansas City, if it is sending to Chicago, to St. Louis, to Cincinnati, it is going to cost $6, $8, and $10, respectively. Okay. So those are the very items that you are now having right here. Now, the question is this. If you look at these items, we need to understand some few things. Okay. So the first thing is this. Define the decision variables for this transportation problem. So we need to first define the decision variables. And the decision variables are defined in terms of X's, X, I, J. Now, where is the I and where is the J? Develop a network graph model. So how do we define the decision variables? How do we do that? Well, to do that, We go back to this situation. You can see that you are sending from Kansas City to all of the three. So the way you write the decision variables, and we call those sections, if you check my previous video, you call those sections node. So you are sending it from node one to another node, node A. You are sending it from node two, which is Omaha, to all of these three nodes, A, B, C. And so the way we define the decision variable is like this. Okay. We we'll define the decision variable as what you see on your screen. So we we'll say that let, let xij be the number of tons of wheat, the number of tons of wheat transported from node I, node I to node J, where I is not equal to J. And then, so that's one way of defining it. Another way of defining it is where you indicated that where I is equal to one, two, three, so that's it. And then J is equal to A, B, and then C, okay? And then here you call it elevator. And then here becomes the males using the actual name. So this is, this is the way you define the object. It's always gonna be something like this. The objective function is always within this parameter. How you define it like this is similar. It's always similar. Okay, in order not to sometimes confuse yourself, that's when you might say from node I to node J. Okay, and then you are sorted. Okay, now the next thing is to be able to draw a network diagram. Now a network diagram, again, all of these are in the previous video, I've explained it very briefly. Okay, but the best way to draw a network diagram is to indicate it with a node. So this could be one node, okay. Let me just indicate that here. This could be one node. The nodes are like circles, like that. These are nodes. These are nodes. Okay, these are nodes. 
And in this, our example, the cities were one, two, three. These were the places where the elevators were. And then we also have another node where they are taking them to. And there were three of them as well. You have A here, you had B, and then you had C. So those were there. Okay, so, so we had these. And there were specific number of items expected to send. Okay, so when you check the, the notes, you will notice that 150, 175, and 275 were the items. So that means that we will indicate them here. You have 150 of the wheat, 175, and then 150, 175, 275. Okay, those were the very items that were sent there. And then, so this becomes what we know as the supply node. Again, the previous video will explain that the supply node. So this is your supply node. And then here will be your demand node. And the demand that we had here to be 200, 100, okay, and then 300. Okay, so how, how do you, of course, this, you have to label them, this is A. Okay, this is A, oh, this is one, two, three, A, B, C. And you can actually write your names, Kansas City, Omaha, DM, and all of that, you can write your names there. Now, how do you write the, the acts? The acts are the decision variables, and the decision variables are the lines, the acts that you draw. So you are from one place going to the other. Okay. And this guy will also be supplying not only from here to A, he'll be supplying from here to B. And then he'll be supplying from here as well to C. Okay. So the decision variables are these acts, and they represent the X, I, J. Okay. They represent the X, I, J. So the question is, what is the X? And what is that? The X, I, J. The X, I, J is representing the movement from that node, the supply node to the demand node. So you can see that we are from node one going to node A. So X, I, J will be represented by X, one, A for that one. So this will be X, one, A. And then the second one will be X, one, B. Okay, so that will be X, one, B. And then, you have the third one, which is X, one, C. Of course, you have to now do the same thing for these other ones. You have to do the same thing. So you have to now go and pick on this from node two, which is Omaha. You will have to supply to Chicago. Omaha will have to supply to St. Louis. Omaha will have to supply to Cincinnati, okay? And again, you have to go and attach their decision variables on them x to a, x to b, x to c. Again, all of these have been explained. So once you've been able to have all of this, now you'll get something like this in your graph, which is the second part of our question. And the question says, develop, okay, develop a network graph for this problem, showing all the costs of the decision variable. Now the costs are important. If you go to the storyline, you see each cost was given to us, each cost. So let me quickly show you the overall way of looking at it. So you can see that in the first instance, I have the cost shown. This is a $6 cost, okay? That's a $6 cost. And this $6 cost was what was given to you know, was the cost incurred or the distance, the cost incurred for traveling from one to A. That's a cost incurred traveling from one to A. Okay, so that's this. And then of course, $8 is a cost incurred from traveling from one to B. $10 is a cost incurred. Okay, so that's for the first one. Then you have all of the others. So when you check the previous video, I've demonstrated all of this. Now, they will form the objective function. So whenever you are writing the objective function, the objective function is going to be picking the cost and multiplying it by the decision variable, okay? 
will do that pretty soon. So you're going to add all of them together to make up the Z min. Now, why min? Min because we are minimizing distance. We are minimizing the distance. Okay. So you have this. So you're going to be 6x1a, 8x1b, 10x1c, and then you come and do the rest, 7x2a, and then all of that. Now, those become the objective function. The, the, the constraints are the nodes. The number of nodes equal to the number of constraints. Again, all of this has been explained. So here we have six nodes. So we have six constraints. So you have to create a constraint for the supply node and you create a constraint for the demand node. And the constraint will be just the decision variables that are leaving the, the acts that are leaving. So the constraint for this one, which will be equal to that 150, okay, equal to the 150 or 170, okay, or 270 depending on which of the circles you are dealing with. That constraint will be picking the value. So let's say that you are picking for 150. Of course, after you determine whether it's a balanced transportation or unbalanced transportation. Now, this is a balanced transportation. Why? Because the total of the supply is 600, and that is equal to the total of the demand, which is 600. So it's a balanced transportation. And in that case, all of the constraints are going to be equal to, equal to, equal to. So you have them there. So you have X1A, X2A, okay. X1A, X1B, X1C, all of them will be equal to 150. Then X2A, X2B, X2C, all of, that will be another constraint. Okay. So that is how you do that. In fact, this is the objective function, which is here, the constraint, we've indicated that you have to check whether it's total demand equals total supply. And once you identify that, you get these constraints. Okay. Again, this is all explained in the previous video. So I want to, that's why I'm moving very fast so that you can go and watch it fully in that previous video. Okay. And what if the constraint was greater than, not balanced, but unbalanced? Again, all of these have been answered in the previous video. And you see that when it is unbalanced, the one that must carry the less than or equal to is the one with a greater total value. So if the demand has a greater, the higher you know, total demand than the supply, then the less than or equal to sign will go to the demand. If the supply rather has that, the less than or equal to sign will go to the supply. Okay. Now, my interest starts from here. In a transportation model, the initial feasible solution can be found using the three approaches that I showed you. So this is where we really begin. The three approaches are the Northwest corner rule, the minimum cell cost and the Vogel approximation. We are going to look at one, but normally once you've done with that, then you use these two methods here to solve for the optimality condition solution, the stepping stone and the modified distribution method. By 1953, uh, Abraham Chance and William Cooper, and you meet these guys in the second semester when we do our data envelopment analysis. Okay, these two guys developed the stepping stone method, which we will use today to arrive at the optimal solution. Now, remember, in any linear programming, sometimes we have a feasible solution, and then we also have an optimal solution. It's the same thing. The modified distribution method is a quicker computational approach. And this came about 1957, 55, okay, which was also a very good way of analyzing. But in 1947, Koopmans was the one who produced the optimum utilization of the transportation system. So the, uh, this is just to give you a brief history of some people who have started before you and I. So let's take the first approach of arriving at the initial feasible solution, the Northwest corner rule. Pay attention here for me. The first thing you do is that you start from the Northwest corner of the transportation tablet. And then you will exhaust the supply at each row before you move down to the next row. 
Then you exhaust the demand requirement of each column before moving to the right to the next column. Then at the end, you check that all supply and demands are met. Of course, when this is read to you, if you don't know what it is about, you will not understand. So of course, as we go through, I'll be referring to this. So we want to find the minimum distance, that's the key, using the Northwest corner rule. I want you to look at the transportation tableau right here for the wheat company, again. The transportation tableau. This, that you see, these are the costs, okay? These are the costs that you are looking at here. And you have the supply on the right. So Kansas City is supplying 150, Yamaha is supplying 175, and DM is supplying that. And then the, the Chicago, which was A, the St. Louis, which was B, okay? And the Cincinnati, which was C, all of them are 300. And like I've indicated, the, the information content that you are seeing right here, okay, those information content represent the cost information. That's what you're seeing here. All right. Now, the first thing you want to do, and by the way, I've moved the supply. You see where the supply is? I've moved it to the first column just so that it to be supplied there, demand there, so that it will look nice. So the first thing we want to do is this. We want to send these items, watch the word, the northwest corner. The north, if you look at this, the northwest corner is here. Okay. So we want to start by supplying the 150 to the northwest corner. And the northwest corner value is six. Okay. So we are going to send the items to that place. But the moment you do that, you got to remember how much is being demanded by that A, column A. Okay, you got to remember that. If only part of it is being demanded, then you have to send only part of it. What I mean is I suppose the 150 here, suppose it was 300. You can't send all the 300 here because only 200 is being demanded. So you have to take part of it and then deal with the other part. So the first thing you want to do is to send the 150, all of the 150 to that section. Okay, so 25 of the, sorry, you send the 150 from Kansas City to, in this contest, to Chicago. So that sorts that part and you will be left with nothing here. So you've been sorted there. The next thing, and according to the rule, look at the rule exhaust the supply. So we've just exhausted the supply. Now, exhaust the demand as well. All right, so you will exhaust the demand requirement. So that's what we just did with the 150. We exhausted the requirement for each of the column before we move on to the next section, okay? So we've done the 150. The next thing is to come to the 170, the supply here. We are going to send it to this next one. And the next one here is, um, remember, we can't send all the 175 to the column A because we already have 150 there. So the only thing that is needed is 50. And we'll be left with what? We'll be left with 125. So we send the 50 to this side. And then we are having 200, 200, okay. And then that means that this very column has been exhausted. We've been able to satisfy the demand. And so we are left with 125. Now that 125, we now shift it to the next column. And the next column, we can't give all the 125 to it because it is expecting 100. The limitation there is 100. And so we'll only send 100 to this level, leaving 25. And then we'll now give the 25 to the last column, which is this one here. 
Now, at this stage, we've been able to now exhaust everything from Omaha, okay, which is number two. It is after this that we go to the next one, which is a 275, which we are now going to distribute it to all of them right here. Now, of course, you know that by now, the 200 has been exhausted here, the 100 has been exhausted. So we are going to give everything now to the last column. And so we send all the 275 to the last column here. And because it already has 25 at the top of it, you can see that when you add them, it will get the whole 300. So what this means is this. I'm just going to take an example of them, this 25. So this 25 means that we are shipping 25 units of grain from Omaha to Cincinnati. Okay. The final move will exhaust Omaha's 275 supply and Chicago's 200 demand and St. Louis's 100 demand. So this is a Northwest corner rule, okay, that we use to arrive at the solution. Now, once you've gotten this, how do you now calculate the overall profit, sorry, overall distance? Well, now looking at the numbers here, you can now multiply the amount sent by each of their costs. So you multiply the 150 by the six. Now here, you're not gonna do anything, so you don't touch it. Those that have been allocated, transported to, they are the ones you're gonna do. So you multiply 150 by six, plus 50 by seven, plus 100 by 11, plus 25 by 11, plus 275 by 12. And when you do that, that will give you the overall total cost of this transportation model. And so indeed, when you look at what I just done, okay, and, and this will match automatically with your formulation that you did, okay, with a, with, a, with a chart, the network chart that you drew, you will see that eventually you will have the Northwest corner rule giving you $5,925, okay? That is a cost, the overall total cost of this transportation model. Okay, or this transportation tablet using the Northwest, using the Northwest corner rule. Using the Northwest corner rule. So that is it. That is how you got to attack it. Okay. That is how you got to attack it. Now, at this stage, obviously, you may have some questions that you wanted to 